This material is part of our course Microeconomics. You can find more at professorpro.net. The current video belongs to Unit 1, Demand and Supply, and covers the class Consumption Possibilities. The objective of this class is to address and answer the following questions. What are the consumption possibilities of an individual? What is the consumption possibility curve? What is the opportunity cost? And how do we calculate the opportunity cost? Let's start with the basics. The consumption possibilities represent the different combinations of products that an individual can acquire. These combinations depend on the amount of resources the individual has, as well as the costs of these products. The most common resources needed to acquire a product are money and time. As such, costs also involve money and time. More resources, or lower costs, can lead to the possibility of acquiring and consuming more of a product. The inverse is true for less resources or higher costs. Considering that our resources are not infinite, we can only acquire a certain amount of products, which forces us to make choices. Buying more orange juice, for example, may force us to reduce our consumption of lemonade. This loss, or sacrifice, is what we call the opportunity cost. In this case, the opportunity cost of one more unit of orange juice was one unit of lemonade. In other words, I lost the opportunity to buy one unit of lemonade because I used my money buying one more unit of orange juice. In economics, we often try to isolate the effect of one event by assuming that all other important variables remain constant. We call this ceteris paribus, which can be translated as everything else stays the same. Take a look at this. The opportunity cost is the next best alternative of a choice. By investing my resources in acquiring one more unit of product X, I lose the opportunity to acquire a certain amount of product Y, which is my second preferred option. Now let's see how these concepts can be represented in graphs. We can show the different combinations of products that can be acquired by drawing the consumption possibility curve, or CPC. The CPC focuses on choices between two products only. Note that this approach can also be referred to as the consumption possibility line, boundary, frontier, or schedule. The typical consumption possibility curve is drawn using two types of data. First, the budget available to the consumer, which we simply call B. And second, the prices of product X and product Y, which we call PX and PY. Let's continue to use orange juice and lemonade as examples. First, we have to choose which product goes on which axis. I chose lemonade for the Y axis and orange juice for the X axis. The result of our analysis will not be affected by this choice, so choose what is more comfortable to you. Keep in mind that the axes represent quantities of both products. They do not directly show their prices. Now, Let's assume that this individual has a budget of $24. Let's also assume that the price of orange juice is $6, while the price of lemonade is $3. The first thing we need to find is the maximum amount of orange juice this individual can acquire or consume in this case. We can find it by taking the budget divided by the price of orange juice. This result is the quantity that would be consumed if the individual were to spend his or her entire budget on orange juice only. We now do the same with lemonade and find the maximum amount this individual could consume if the entire budget was spent on lemonade only. Since prices are typically constant for one individual, we simply draw a straight line between these two points. This line is the CPC. It shows all of the possible consumption combinations this individual can buy when spending all of his or her current budget. There are three types of combinations or points in this graph. Attainable, efficient, 
and unattainable. A combination can be called attainable if it falls below the CPC. For example, that point could have the coordinates 1 unit of orange juice and 4 units of lemonade. When a point is below the line, it requires less money to buy than the total budget available. In this case, 4 units of lemonade at $3 each will cost $12, while 1 unit of orange juice at $6 per unit will cost $6. The total cost of this combination is $18, which is lower than the budget of $24. A combination can be called efficient if it lies exactly on the CPC. For example, that point could have the coordinates 2 units of orange juice and 4 units of lemonade. When a point is on the line, it requires the same amount of money as the total budget available. In this case, 4 units of lemonade at $3 each will cost $12, and 2 units of orange juice at $6 each will also cost $12. The total cost of this combination is $24, which is equal to the budget of this individual. Finally, a combination can be called unattainable if it falls above the CPC. For example, that point could have the coordinates 3 units of orange juice and 5 units of lemonade. When a point is above the line, it requires more money to buy than the total budget available. In this case, 5 units of lemonade at $3 each will cost $15 while three units of orange juice at $6 each will cost $18. The total cost of this combination is $33, which is higher than the budget of $24. Note that the CPC does not show the actual consumption of an individual. It just shows the possibilities of consumption, given the person's budget and the prices of these products. This individual may, for example, prefer to consume two units of orange juice with four units of lemonade. If this individual prefers lemonade, the preferred consumption combination could be, for example, one unit of orange juice and six units of lemonade. If this individual prefers orange juice instead, the preferred consumption combination could be, for example, three units of orange juice and two units of lemonade. This is what we call a movement along the CPC. Changes in preferences lead to changes in the choice of consumption, but not of the CPC itself. As long as the combinations are efficient, the choices of the individual will lie on the line. As an individual chooses to consume more of one product, he or she loses the opportunity to consume units of the other product. Let's assume that this individual initially chooses to consume one unit of orange juice and six units of lemonade. If this individual decides for one reason or another to consume one more unit of orange juice, an opportunity cost will arise. Ceteris paribus, buying one more unit of orange juice will result in losing two units of lemonade. As such, the opportunity cost of one unit of orange juice is equal to two units of lemonade. This is also equal to the price of orange juice divided by the price of lemonade, which is the same as the slope of this line. Since the CPC is a straight line, the opportunity cost is constant along the whole line. Note that the opportunity cost of one product is not in terms of money. It is in relation to the other product. We call this comparative analysis and we use this very often in economics. The inverse is true for the opportunity cost of lemonade. In order to consume two more units of lemonade, the individual would have to sacrifice one unit of orange juice. If it were possible to buy half a unit of orange juice, consuming one more unit of lemonade would result in losing half a unit of orange juice. As such, the opportunity cost of one unit of lemonade is equal to half a unit of orange juice. This is also equal to the price of lemonade divided by the price of orange juice, which is the same as the inverse of the slope of this line. Note that the opportunity cost relates to the increase of one unit of a product. In economics, we often focus on the effect of small changes of a variable. 
We call this marginal analysis, which is one of the most important pillars of this field. To conclude, let's review the questions that this class set out to answer. In this class, we saw that the consumption possibilities of an individual are the different combinations of products that can be obtained with the available resources. The consumption possibility curve is a graphical representation of the consumption possibilities. The CPC is usually a straight line with a negative slope. In the context of the CPC, the opportunity cost is the amount of a product that cannot be acquired because the individual has chosen to acquire another product instead. Also in the context of the CPC, the opportunity cost of the x-axis product is equal to the price of x divided by the price of y. To calculate it for the y-axis product, we take the inverse of that number. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, you can find the following examples. Thank you.